You don't think he would dig up another... Oh, no, he wouldn't. But I guess he has been. Oh, my. What have I done? When visiting the Imperial City's Temple District, we rest a spell at the All Saints Inn. Once inside, we can overhear a rather handy rumor between the Red Guard publican and a customer. Hello there. Thornir will buy almost anything, and I mean anything. Thornir isn't too picky, which is nice. I have no more to say to you. Oh, if that's the way you feel. Exiting the inn, we later find ourselves in the bustling market district, brimming with peoples and possibilities for commerce and coin. Near the center of the trading hub, however, lies the general store Three Brothers Trade Goods. It should be noted, certain shops in the Imperial City appear to have been named in honor of restaurants in Maryland, home of Bethesda Softworks. Among such are The Main Ingredient and Three Brothers Italian Restaurant. Upon entering, one of the brothers Tertullian Verus propositions. Say, you look like someone that could help us out. H having a bit of trouble with another merchant in town who goes by the name of Thorinir. Thorinir? We'd heard that name recently. People say he isn't afraid to buy things. Dirt cheap, too. He is dirty. Plain and simple, I don't trust him at all, won't even come to the merchant meetings, and sets his prices so low, he undercuts everyone. If you want to give me a hand, go speak with Jensine at her good-as-new merchandise store. She can clue you in and maybe offer some coin. Be seeing you. Unsure if we want to get involved, we find, for a second time, when entering the main ingredient, an alchemical store near the southern gate to the arena, its desperate Breton proprietor, Ogier Georic, besieges. Finally, a new customer. Please, look around. Just promise me you won't buy from that fetcher, Thoranir. Jensine is running the show. She will get in but good. Bye. Seemingly unable to escape the clamoring chorus of dissent echoing from the perturbed shopkeeper's moors, for a third time when entering the gilded carafe, Breton alchemist Claudette Perrick slanders. I have everything for the budding alchemist under one roof, far more than Thorinir would ever have, despite his horrid business ethics. That guy is going to run me out of business soon. His prices are so low. I don't know how he does it. I think he's up to something. If you're interested, you should head over to Jensine's Good As New merchandise. She heads up a committee that is trying to investigate him. Talk to Jensine. She can help you better than I can. Good day. However, before throwing our lot in with these incensed merchants, we decide to first visit Thorinir in the general store named the Copious Coin Purse, located across from the first edition bookstore and adjacent to the gate to the Green Emperor Way. Once inside, we see a diminutive wood elf who stands proudly behind his large wooden counter that reads, Copious Coin Purse, the shop where your purse is just as full after you buy. Bold claim. But the Bosma, presumably Thorinir, does have an eager twinkle in his eye as he haggles. What kind of deal can I make for you today? Well... The Imperial capital is a mean market to break into. Tell me, what's his secret? I have the best prices in town. Why? I'm smart, and you're smart. We know the right people, we get the best deals. Goodbye. Please, come again. Curious at the Bosma's brazen assertion, the quest Unfriendly Competition has begun, and our journal then updates. One of the shopkeepers in the market district of the Imperial City has informed me of another shop that opened recently. Apparently, this shop's prices are so low it's undercutting all of their sales. They're collectively looking for someone to hire to investigate, as they suspect foul play. I was told to go speak with Jensine at her good as new merchandise store for more information. Inside the competing general goods store, a sullen-looking Nord pawnbroker, Jen Sane, admits. Feel free to browse, friend. It's nice to see a new shopper. I was afraid I lost any hope of new business ever since Thorinir opened up. Hmm, that's a stark contrast to Thorinir's answer. What's it like running a shopfront in the big city? Everyone comes to the big city to buy and sell. Why not? More stores, better selection, 
better prices. We then admit, look, Tertullian of the Three Brothers Trade Centers. It's about some, uh, let's say, unfriendly competition with this new merchant, Thorinir. So, Tertullian sent you, huh? Well then, he usually sizes up people well, so you may be just what we're looking for. Well, let's start from the beginning. I'm the chairperson for the Society of Concerned Merchants. We formed this group a while back to keep a nice, fair economic balance in town. Not every store is a member, but we're slowly trying to convince them to join. Everything was fine until Thorinir opened his shop nearby. Selling all sorts of merchandise, he undercuts prices like you wouldn't believe. He doesn't always sell what we sell, but it is still a problem. People who buy tend to want to spend their money there. That leaves none for us. It's getting so bad, a few of us may have to close up shop. He outright refuses to join the society or even discuss the matter. We are convinced he's up to no good. What we need is for you to case his establishment and figure out where he gets his inventory. Find some proof of his wrongdoing and let us know. We cannot do it ourselves, as he recognizes all of us. The job pays a fair bounty in gold when he is brought to justice. How does he price his inventory that appears alarming? Sounds like fair trade to me. His inventory must be stolen. It has to be. He prices less than it costs to make some of those things. Go see for yourself. I don't know. Thorny doesn't seem the type. I hope you're more successful uncovering his scheme than we've been. Thanks again for your help. We had no other place to turn. Not fully convinced that the Wood Elf is up to something nefarious versus a strong-armed union bullying someone with superior business acumen. The promised gold, though, is too tempting to not at least investigate, and our quest then updates. A group calling themselves the Society of Concerned Merchants has hired me to investigate a new store that's just opened up in the market district with ridiculously low prices. They suspect the owner must be doing something illegal. I should pay a visit to Thorinir at the copious coin purse. Returning to the coin purse, Thorinir staying on brand greets. What kind of deal can I make for you today? I was actually looking to learn more about your inventory, as it were. What about my inventory? Three options we can first ask. Come on, where did you get it? Well, that would be a trade secret. I can't divulge how I pass the great savings on to you now, can I? Just like a baker not revealing his best recipes, I must keep my sources anonymous, or every merchant in town would use them. Suffice to say, they are quite reliable and low cost. That way, you walk out with a full coin purse. Or compliment, let me tell you something. It's a very nice selection, Thorinir. Well, thank you. It's not only a fine assortment of goods, but a bit of a treasure trove. You never know what I'll have in stock. I can see by the look on your face, you wonder where I get all these fantastic items. I'll tell you what I tell everyone else who asks. It's all about who you know. My sources are good, but they are secret. Anyway, have fun looking around, and when you are ready to buy, give me a shout. And finally, you think it's nice, I think it's stolen. You have some nerve. Where do you come off accusing me of something you know nothing about? Now, either buy something or get out. Goodbye. We then note in our journal, speaking to Thorny hasn't revealed any information. Since he's obviously hiding something, I should keep an eye on him and watch what he does after his shop closes. Perhaps following the diminutive dealer to his distributor will do the trick. At 8pm, like clockwork on Maundus, Midas and Freddus, Thorinir will visit the Merchant's Inn for a few libations. Walk with virtue, friend. Staying out of sight, we tail him outside the drinking establishment, with the market district bathed in moonlight as the grogged-up elf saunters back to his store, but surprisingly makes a hard left at his door at the last minute tracing his way around the back of the storefront and into a small garden to meet what appears to be a blonde Nord, and he calls out in the dark. 
That you, Agamir? Shh, not so loud. How many times have I told you that? Sorry, I am not used to this kind of meeting. It always makes me nervous. Well, just shut up and listen to me. The next shipment will be sooner than I expected. Just have the money ready. Same assortment of things? I mean, I have enough clothing for now. You take what I get. I get notice at the last second, and I have to jump on it. No time to be picky about it. Well, that society is putting more pressure on me, so maybe we better cut back for a while. You cut back now, and I'm going to take my business elsewhere. Or maybe pay a visit to that Jen scene and tell her about your little scheme. Fine. You made your point. Contact me when you have the items, and we'll meet again. Don't worry. It'll be very soon. Now get out of here. As the two depart, it should be noted, if we confront Thorinir at any stage during this exchange, he will end the conversation with... Why are you following me? Please, go away. I'm quite busy. I've observed a meeting between Thorinir and a mysterious man named Agamir. Looks like my new target is Agamir. I should follow him and see where he goes. Following the Nord into the northern cemetery of the Emperor's Way. Eh? He stalks, determined through the night, and we chase him down as he spins upon us questioning. Yeah. Hey, I, uh, I couldn't help but hear you're a local trader. I was wondering about your inventory. Inventory? I am a simple trapper. My inventory just consists of pelts and skins. I would hardly call that inventory. Now get out of my way. Oh, so you haven't shared your inventory with an elf named Thornia, perchance. Don't know anyone by that name. Now go away. The Nord then strides towards the Talos Plaza district, and we trail him, heading south until he enters a home, noting. I've discovered that Agamir has a house in Talos Plaza. I should go inside when he's not around and investigate. Attempting to barge our way through the door, we find Agamir has barred the door from the inside. Waiting in the nearby bushes until mid-afternoon the following day, we see the man leave his abode and cautiously approach, entering after breaking through his average lock. Inside his abode, we begin to search for any clue of Thorinir's dirt-cheap inventory, heading upstairs to Agamir's private quarters. Outside of a human skull laying upon a shelf, nothing looks sinister or out of place. Instead, we then turn our attention to his basement. Plumbing the depths of the dimly lit cellar quickly reveals something is deeply wrong. The skeletal remains of several corpses are littered about, and amidst the macabre scene, we have a revelation noting. I found my way into Agamir's basement. The place consists of an odd assortment of clothing and trinkets. Most disturbing is the dirty shovel and mud-encrusted boots tucked into the corner and the bits of ground bone meal strewn about. I suspect Agamir's stock he sells to Thorinir is taken from the recently dead. I should continue to search carefully for more solid evidence into this grisly accusation. Snooping around the room... A mix of blood, bone, and valuables are strewn haphazardly about, and we find in the northwestern corner a well-lit desk propping up Agamir's macabre manifest. Opening it, it looks like a founder manifest that seems to detail names of the recently deceased, what they were buried with, and their locations in Cyrodiil. I should take this macabre manifest and confront Thorinir, as he may not realize where his merchandise is coming from. It should be noted... One of the deceased is our first and easily missed Lord of the Rings reference being Oford Gabings, an anagram of Frodo Baggins, and lists several items that Frodo carried during the Lord of the Rings trilogy, including a travel cloak with silver and green leaf fastener, and an enchanted short sword with inlaid writing called Sting, a leather-bound travel journal, and a gold ring with inscription and in brackets, cursed, question mark, being, of course, the One Ring. It should be noted, we will soon discover more wry Lord of the Rings easter eggs and items, but for now, we depart Agamir's abode, tracing our way back to the market district to show Thorinir the diary and happen across the suspicious Nord on our travels who questions. 
A. Yeah. Yeah? We know what you've been up to, Agamir. Very naughty taking from the dead. I have no idea what you're talking about, but you have a sick mind. Get away from me. Perhaps foolhardy alerting the undoubtedly dangerous grave robber prematurely, we then race to Thorinir before the Nord can intercept him. Inside the Cobius coin purse, the ever chipper Thorinir welcomes. Welcome back. With bad news, we say. Thorinir, we have proof your inventory has been absconded from the nearby dead. Can't imagine the Imperial Guard will be too lenient on grave robbers, especially of their fallen kin. It's time to come clean. What say you? I can't believe what I'm seeing in this book. I'm mortified to think these things here were once on the bodies of the recently deceased. It's just too horrible to comprehend. I don't even know what to say. I, I guess an apology is not enough. What can I do? Thornia's shock seems genuine. Well, time to prove yourself innocent. Help me catch Agamir. Yes, that's the least I can do. First and foremost, I will never meet with him again. I can promise you that. Secondly, I remember him mentioning a place he had to be this very day. Hmm, yes, that's right. He said that he wouldn't be able to do anything else, as he had something important to do. You don't think he would dig up another... Oh, no, he wouldn't. But I guess he has been. Oh, my. What have I done? Don't worry. I'll stop him. Yes, you do that. And in the meantime, I'll decide what to do with all these ill-gotten things. I'm so sorry. Before we go, is it all of your inventory? I don't even want to look at it for another moment. How do you think the other merchants will react to an inventory taken directly from the dead? I hope everyone can forgive me for not doing a better job checking up on my sources. I hope you can forgive me. I had no idea. A quest and updates. After showing the macabre manifest to Thorinir, he agreed to stop meeting Agamir. He also told me that Agamir said he had something important to do this very day. I think I need to check out the local graveyard, as the last name on the list was here in the Imperial City. I should return with one more piece of evidence of Agamir's crime to confirm the manifest's contents. As night falls, we spark a torch to begin our search of the many graves in the Imperial Way, half expecting to find Agamir, shovel in hand, brazenly exhuming one of the recently deceased residents. Nearing a statue of Talos, we find, to our right, an open mausoleum and a journal updates. I've noticed that the door to the Trentius family mausoleum has been unsealed. This must be Agamir's doing. I should proceed inside. Cautiously entering the tomb, we see two shadowy figures meeting, a note. I've located Agamir inside the Trentius family mausoleum. It appears as though he's attempting to desecrate another grave, along with someone else I don't recognize. I need to convince him to stop this heinous act. Descending the stairs, the Nord quickly intercepts. I had a feeling you'd catch on sooner or later. That's why I had this trap prepared for you. If you'll notice, the grave is already dug. This time, it wasn't to take something away from the graveyard. It was to add something. I'm afraid all I can offer you is an unmarked grave. The two Nords then attack in unison, and Agamir's blade, bearing a sinister red hue, <laughs> drains our endurance and willpower on impact, attempting to exit the trap. What's the matter? Getting tired? We find the door was locked behind us. Forced to face the duo, we barely block their attacks with our sword, being pressed back. And so we retreat, finding on the northern side of the room. Ah! Uh. Ha, you'll never take me down. A leveled mace by one of the tombs here. called Calibum's Grim Retort, a rare, non-leveled yeah. mace <laughs> boasting 31 damage, absorb blunt 8 points for 20 seconds, absorb strength 5 points for 20 seconds, and frost damage 10 points on strike. Let's see how these Nords truly enjoy the cold. Do your worst! Oh. 
Once dead, a journal updates. Agari has been slain. Since the penalty for grave robbing is death, it somehow seems as though justice has been done. I should search the gravesite for anything potentially incriminating. The first thing we do notice, however, lying on the floor in front of us, is Agamir's tainted weapon called the Debaser. Now, remember the slain Oford Gabin's reference in Agamir's Macabre Manifest? Well, the Lord of the Rings Easter egg number two is that the Debaser is, at its surface, likely a reference to Frodo's sword Sting, indicated by its blue inlaid writing, which are reminiscent to Sting's ability to glow blue. However, the devs kept the references pretty cryptic, probably due to not wanting to be total ripoffs or copyright. Congruently, the sword's imbue does glow red instead of blue. <laughs> What's up? As a quick aside, it should be noted, Debaser can also be pickpocketed from Agamir prior to the quest. Next, we loot the Nord companion Rolgarel and find standard leveled iron armor and not much else on him or Agamir. On Agamir, we find keys to his house and the mausoleum key, requiring proof the deed is done. We find next to the Lord Belarus Trentius's cracked tomb, Agamir's shovel and scoop it up as we exit the mausoleum on the hunt for our final precious reward as our journal updates. I've acquired Agamir's shovel, still damp with the fresh earth of the open grave. This is the final bit of proof I need of Agamir's crimes. I should bring it back to Thorinir. Returning to the copious coin purse during business hours, Thorinir questions. Were you able to stop Agamir? Yes. Here is his shovel. Then we can at last rest. I feared had he somehow bested you, I'd be next. It is fortunate that your skills exceeded his. I've come to some decisions. I intend to donate all of the money I have made, as well as what is left of these stolen items, to the temple. I also want you to know that I had a long discussion with Jen Seen, and I have decided to join the society. I realize you risked your life to give me a chance, and Thorinir never forgets things like that. Accept this ring as a humble reward. It's the least I can do to say thank you. Now, don't be a stranger. The copious coin purse is still in business. So, that's it for the inventory? Was the temple happy to collect? I have disposed of all my ill-gotten merchandise and replaced it with more expensive but carefully obtained items. You've shown me mercy. I won't forget that. Thank you. With Thorinir's blessing, we then received the final Lord of the Rings Easter egg, an item noted under Oford Gabing's possessions called the Weatherwood Circlet, in which the diary had questioned if the ring was cursed, making this ring a likely reference to Frodo's ring, the One Ring, although it has similar inscribings. Sadly, the ring imparts resist fire and frost versus the superior power of invisibility of the One Ring. Now leaving Thorinir with his reputation renewed, our quest then updates. Thorinir has agreed to donate all his ill-gotten merchandise to the local temple and begin selling legitimate merchandise. He also rewarded me with a small ring as a token of his esteem. I should now bring the macabre manifest and Agamir's shovel to Jensen for my reward. I have been anxiously awaiting your return. We then inform, we are, have proof of Agamir's crimes with his shovel here. What do you think of Agamir taking the items from the dead? The very thought of what Agarmir was doing sickens me. I hope those poor souls rest in peace now that this is over. Thorinir donated his inventory to the temple. It's pretty noble. I am pleased that Thorinir has decided to donate his inventory to the temple. At least he is trying to make amends. I guess Thorinir wasn't a bad sort after all. Well done! This shovel will certainly confirm Agarmir's crimes. Along with the manifest, it should prove useful to the City Watch. In your absence, Thornir visited and we spoke at length about his role in this scheme. I believe him when he says he didn't know Agarmir's sources. He told me of his intentions to donate all of the money and inventory to the local temple. 
He also agreed to buy and sell merchandise at fair prices. Last but not least, he's officially joined the society. I am taken aback by his honest intentions. In return, the society has decided not to press charges. His name will be absconded from the records of this crime. Now, I'm sure you are waiting to hear about your reward. The society thanks you for everything you have done. Please take this gold. Many thanks on behalf of all of us. I'm mature enough to admit I was mistaken about Thorinair. He's a welcome member of our group in the market district. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. And finally, the other merchants will then share their new outlook on the latest member of their society of concerned merchants. Now, with considerably less competition to be concerned about. Be happy to help you. The society triumphs once more, thanks to you, of course. Any friend of the society is a friend of mine. Have a look around. Well, maybe Thorinir wasn't responsible for digging up those corpses. But good riddance to his insane prices. Nice job. Hello again. You're more than welcome here. I have everything for the budding alchemist under one roof. Thorinir didn't turn out to be such a bad fellow after all. I'm glad he decided to join the society. Farewell. Spare a coin for the infirm.